I hang out with a lot of mystics. Um, by that, I mean people who are, feel like they are in contact with mystery. And a lot of them are in my community uh, because our work evokes this. So we grow this, uh, we're growing a whole pasture, <laughs> you know, perfect <laughs> for southern Indiana. <laughs> um, and I, I am also grateful just to know how many people are s just hungry to have this um, and don't want to explain it every minute. So for some of us, uh, we just need some spaces. Oh, just need some spaces. And, you know, I think that our work is one of those. So. I'm trying to get, the, uh, trying to see what I can do about, you know, tiptoeing back into my own religious community and where there's, I think, willingness. And I've been very wounded in my practice of trying to figure out how to do this. Um, I've gotten hurt. So, but I, as I tiptoe back in, I, I, I wonder how in a beautiful group of people who I think are much more ready to move their whole beings than our tradition would you know, th this template of, you know, white European-based history, you know, I, like how, you know, it's like such a, such a yearning. And every now and then, like a couple weeks ago, I just saw this explosion of people get up and dance in the middle of a congregational worship space to dancing in the moonlight at the invitation of the minister. So, oh, maybe it is the person who's leading who has to have the courage, and the people who have had have to cultivate this, so that this breaking through, you know, maybe people are tired of dismantling, you know, maybe they're ready to mantle, you know. Um, I'm hoping that's where we're going, you know. I, I feel um, so grateful for my own special chemistry set <laughs> <laughs> that I've been given that seem to be awake to something greater from the beginning. Um, so I, I, I feel like I want to be careful not to make assumptions about how we get there or what that is um, for any individual person. Mm -hmm. I want to really respect all of the teachings that would say stop and look uh, for this right where you are without going to any grand thing. Um, for me, I'm lucky. I feel like by entering into the moment with whatever it is, I, I feel it inside my body, this awakeness. Um, I don't know if I can invite that for every person. For some people, it's really as simple as inviting them to put one hand in the air, move your hand slow and smooth. And we're going to do uh, this little hand dance that I lead them into for a moment on behalf of you know, a loved one who's suffering. And their eyes are tearing up. For 40 years, they've been working around the struggle of this loved one, and they've never had a chance to do that and their eyes are tearing up because something else is being tapped. To me, that opening is where the sensations can connect somehow all the way through the body, you know, through movement, through emotion, through the movement of thought, everything moving. That, if I can just allow that space for movements to happen, I feel like that's, and for some kind of blessing, you know, in that. Uh, I feel that's a, <laughs> kind of a victory, you know, mm -hmm. for me. I Awe is the first, is the word that comes up uh, for me, just experiential. So first of all, we would probably take it back to the experiential. What is that, what is the experience that we might be either pointing people toward or noticing when it happens. Um, and I think, you know, as human beings, 
just functionally, we seem to have this capability of having these moments. Uh, it doesn't seem to be happening all the time, but we just have these moments where we connect, we kind of recognize the bigger picture, we recognize connections of all things, we recognize our common humanity, we recognize, oh, you're pretty much like me, even though I thought we were really different sorts of people, or you know, whatever that is. Um, and w it's, it's more like, okay, what we, it's not so much that we said, okay, we want to have people have an experience of awe. How do we get there? It was more like we found that when we did those things, that that often was a result um, on big levels and little, little levels. So it could be that, you know, we're in the first round of these simple, what we, we call babbling. We're doing the, the very first round and something happens, you know, between the two of us that was unexpected or had a sense of being profound or, whatever, um, and then to recognize, oh, that's a powerful experience. That's, a, that's something that we think that human beings seek, and that when they have it, they're healthier. You know, we're, we're all better off, not even just as individual bodies, but uh, the group body and the bigger body. So w I, w I would probably take it back to that m kind of more experiential, mm -hmm. Um, what, what is the sort of experience? And of course it would be, it would probably be slightly different for different people, both what creates it and how they actually experience. But again, we, we have this kind of basic idea of what, what is it that when we experience something that's bigger than us, um, when we sense our connection, and then what's possible when we recognize that? It seems to me that a whole different thing is possible you know, when we recognize our humanity. And if I can experience it in this group, well, maybe this group over here that I don't think it's possible to have it with, well, maybe it would be possible. So even just the imagination mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. being able to experience that connection, even though I haven't had it with that group over there, um, that must do something good for the world. You know.